Hi Jens, thanks for welcoming us here at Experience One in Berlin. Can you talk a bit about yourself and what Experience One is all about? Originally, um, we come from an automotive background. Uh, we worked for um, uh, Mercedes as our founding, um, founding client in 2006. Now we have three offices in uh, Stuttgart, Frankfurt and, and Berlin. We are in our core a digital agency, um, but we evolved to sort of integrate also physical touch points and uh, try to look at customer experience in a holistic way. Um, so yes, we are digital at its core, but we always include the physical, uh, physical realm to create the best possible customer experiences for our clients. So you, you're perfect for us because um, I mean, this combination of digital and physical spaces, um, that's what interests us. Um, is actually how to combine it, how to make it um, really one thing. Because what we see very often is that uh, in physical spaces, um, digital is planned at a very late stage. So it comes kind of unnatural into the picture. Um, but your approach is more of, of thinking physical and digital from the very beginning. Yeah, we don't differentiate uh, according to, to channels because we, for us the, the experience is the most important thing. Uh, and also from, from my personal history, I started with uh, on the client side with Mercedes, then worked for several digital agencies and then had a four to five year long excursion into advertisement and um, uh, yeah, communication. And you realize that you sort of need to bring it all together in, into one experience. Advertising communication is important, but um, the experience itself you have with a service, with a product is as important as, as branding and becomes the new branding. Uh, and you can't really differentiate it between this is digital, this is analog. It's all one thing now. So you always have to have a certain omni-channel approach to, uh, to, to go about it. And that's what we focus on as, as a company, also with our um, strategy and how we approach projects. So it's, it's really important to, to understand the, the full process, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and I, I think lots of solutions, sometimes they, they um, fall short uh, because they only either concentrate on a great product representation. And uh, we also have like a huge video wall and a touch table and they can put like uh, little fabric patterns onto the touch table and then it shows up in 3D. Um, but the hard part is behind what, what happens behind because all the designers of that company, they need to sort of change their design process because they now need to create the shirts in a 3D tool and not with scissors and uh, pen. Uh, that's for one. And then you also need to integrate lots of IT systems in the background to actually not only uh, send the order out, but also to um, help um, consult the buyer better. So now you have all the historical sales data and you can say, well, the green shirts last year didn't sell well. Maybe you should take different colors. So it's also the different quality of, of uh, consultancy that now the salesperson from, from this company has. Uh, but it takes a lot of things in, in the background. And if you look at sometimes digital retail solutions, they either are very fancy in the front end, but then behind that, there's the, you can't fulfill the order or there's nothing happening with it. So again, it's, it, there's a break. Or you have the process right, but it doesn't look nice on the front end. Yeah, so that's what we're talking a lot about is the um, actual backend back integration or the, the full integration of systems. Because uh, if you have these breaks in between, um, you don't realize the full potential. But it also sounds like an awful complex, awfully complex uh, project um, to manage several backend systems, uh, integrate that into then basically bringing it to a front end uh, tool. Um, and on top of the, all of that, um, also a change management project, right? Uh, yeah, but that, <laughs> I think that's the, uh, the fun part of, of our jobs. Uh, um, when you work in agencies and are able to sort of redesign a core business process, it always involves um, processes, people, and the way they work. So there's a lot of change happening and you need to have a buy-in from upper management, of course, and that only works if you can also prove the success. And um, of course, like then during the pandemic, you can question, well, will they go actually to the showroom um, because of uh, quarantine, etc. But because you have digitized all these backend processes, you can also now take the showroom experience remotely and have a solution for when you cannot actually physically physically go there because of lockdown 
and um, they also realize that's a big help because in, in February, January, they will present their new collection and they can't present it. They have it there, still physical because they're in a, a transition process, but all the three, five hundred uh, buyers from all over Germany, they can't come to this uh, location. And now they try to do Teams meeting and try to film the shirts. And because we have digitized the whole process behind it, now we can also design it for, for web. And that's what we're also doing. So perfect timing right now with the uh, pandemic. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it would be better if they could come. But of, of course, now, um, I mean, it has been said a lot that uh, the pandemic is also sort of a um, focus glass or like it speeds up digital, digital projects and um, this, this showroom process uh, is responsible for 80% of the revenue so this is the main sales tool and they need to have a digital solution for it so it's um, I think we were we started at the right time um, a little bit before the pandemic <laughs> to get it all up and running um, but we're very happy to help them um, so that's super interesting. Um, but do you have another one, um, probably from from a retail side? I, I know you're working for Mercedes Benz um, yeah. in, in China. I think you did a yeah. lot of uh, retail for them. Uh, uh, we did, and are st are st still doing so. Um, China's a little bit of a different market. They're very advanced uh, with digital tools, uh, also with digital retail, um, and they approached us uh, with two insights or two, two challenges. Uh, one being um, Mercedes expanded a lot in, in, in China over the last decade. And um, so they have lots of flagship stores or big dealerships, but not so big anymore because they go to the city centers where the rents are high. It's a common known uh, problem, but a huge product uh, offering. They can't fit all the cars in there. So you need to have a digital representation of all these models. And the second insight was that maybe the sales personnel is not as, um, because they expanded also so, so fast, uh, not as well um, versed in like how to sell the brand and bring across the feeling of, of the brand and do a good consultancy. So that's why we designed a sort of a self-service station also with a touch table and a video wall installation where people can come in and have a first touch point with the brand in the retail store and explore the brand uh, the product portfolio and configure their car and it also serves as a first queue in an interaction with the, with the dealer so it can pick up that configuration and start a discussion so it helps uh, both sides to get a feeling for the brand and the sales personnel maybe has a little bit more time and lots of people are there um, but then also has a talking point uh, um, when it comes to that and it's, it's live in over 600 retailers um, so that's we, we want to change or well, that's always what we set out to do. We want to really change the customer experience and you can only do that if you impact a lot of people. And in retail, you need to have lots of locations to do that. You're coming from an experience side and from a conceptual side, but in terms of technology, are you, are you missing anything? Or are you, are you saying uh, there are so many possibilities with the technology we have currently at hand so we can actually do what we want to do? Or do you think, that would be one cool thing um, that I, I would really love to see. Actually, it's a very good question, not that easy to answer because uh, um, the, the, the first um, reaction is, yeah, let's do all the, the fancy new technology that is out there and we also play with it. We play with projection mapping, etc. So we have a little uh, also lab uh, going on for ourselves to do like technical exploration. But when it comes to real life projects, um, sometimes it's better to, to be not at the forefront when your goal is to create customer impact. Um, my personal example was I, I was in Beijing uh, to do also when we visited uh, Mercedes to do a little research and they, they're really like a couple of years ahead of, of Europe. And uh, they have these augmented reality mirrors in I think it's Intersport, their flagship store. So you can stand in front of them, uh, uh, these augmented reality mirrors and you, you are being scanned in and then you can swipe and change uh, the shirts, the trousers, what's that. It's a nice feature, but then I expect I can press a button and then the sales personnel would come in and bring me that trouser or whatever. No, you um, say, okay, this is the one I like. Now I have to find it in four stories 
So again, the process behind is not really integrated and then it becomes just like a little eye candy instead of uh, solving a real world problem. So I think it's fun to explore technology, um, but when it comes to creating customer impact, you always need to sort of find the right balance when it, is, when it has the right maturity to make a difference uh, and when maybe to wait a little longer. Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you.